Hi there. The Ares expansion comes with a set of tiles and cards to replace and augment the originals. Here's a tile that comes with the game, and here's the one I made which replaces it. You can see that my tile's a lighter color. It's also lighter in weight, but it's the same thickness as the original tile, and that really helps with the tactile experience. That's because I mounted the paper onto one millimeter illustration board, which is fun to work with. If you don't know about Fixative, it's a bit of a must for quality print and play. It protects the printed material. I didn't bother with Fixative on these until after I cut them, so you can see the cost of that mistake here. This is my most embarrassing tile. You need good ventilation to spray Fixative, and I live in an apartment, so it takes some planning. But other than that, these tiles are just great. These markers are just mounted onto some poster board. They're not particularly interesting. But I've got to say that cutting semicircles by hand is really a pain. Someone's gone and updated the tokens. So not only did they replace semicircles with straight cuts, which are much easier, they included a token back, which this one doesn't have. So if I bother to update this, I'll probably use those newer ones. But the cards are the most interesting part. Ares has 23 cards, and it replaces 11 of the original ones. So how did I deal with that? Well, first I bought a deck on Etsy. I saw it was available for sale, and I wanted to know what spending 20 bucks having someone else print cards for you was like. So here's the original mining area, and this is the one I got on Etsy. Uh, these cards are fine. I actually cover that in another video, but I didn't like these cards. The backs look different. The border's different. This star is not as bright. The planet is not only a different color, but smaller, so you can tell it apart. I'd love to be able to build some of the other fan expansions, so it mattered to me that these cards didn't look particularly different. And I also didn't want to keep spending money to have somebody print cards for me. I asked Frick's Games if they sold blank project cards, and they said they didn't. But I got lucky. I mentioned on Board Game Geek that I was looking to buy project cards on their own, and someone contacted me and said he had some. They bought a second set of the whole game just for the player tokens and sold me the cards. And that's great, because these backs are completely indistinguishable from the originals. They are the originals. So I printed the card fronts on copier paper, and I mounted them. And because I sleeved my cards, I didn't need to worry about paper getting caught up during a shuffle, or applying fixative. I guess I could apply the fixative. But by keeping the cards in the sleeves, Admittedly, these are cheap sleeves, but it really solves the whole problem. Your opponents don't have any idea whether your card comes from a given expansion or not. Of course, some people suggested solving the problem by buying the official card sleeves, but... There were, first of all, there were 50 bucks, and second of all, there's no way I'm resleeving all my cards. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Okay, thanks.